Hi everyone, welcome to the replay of Blackhead U. I'm Ashley. Uh, Melanie's not here tonight because she is at a concert. Because, you know, if you're a Blackhead, you're also generally a fan of many other musical groups as well. But it all ties back to the Blackhead. So as people are joining, I just want to say hello. I'm Ashley, I'm from South Dakota, and Melanie is from Toronto, Canada. We are here every single week at 9 Eastern, 8 Central, 6 Pacific. Did I do that right? Someone tell me. I see as you guys are rolling in, hello, hello. I uh, want to also apologize earlier tonight. I wanted to do a little practice run and make sure that everything was working. And uh, in doing that, I think I confused a few people. A, because we were going live. And generally on this account, we go live at this time. <clears throat> and B, because I went live with my twin sister, Elena, who's part of the Gacky Girls. Um, and that was in an attempt to make sure things worked, but also, um, yeah, there's two of us. So the Gacky Girls are three of us. So Melanie, uh, if you have not joined us before, at Melanie.bw is generally the uh, the co-host or always the co-host of this program. Um, and she is at a concert tonight. So um, I am here alone, but we're gonna be definitely checking out the comments and making sure that you guys are available. Someone just said you have green circles around your eyes. Yes, I do, because I'm using a ring light. Let me maybe turn it down. Um, and I have my glasses on and they have a blue light filter to help so my eyes don't get so dry while I'm uh, doing programs like this, but it also means uh, there's a little bit of a glare. So we're just gonna turn that down a little bit. It doesn't really help, sorry guys. I can't take these off or I can't see. So we are going to be going live here shortly with our first guest. I see that she is here. So again, apologies for the, <laughs> the green circles. If I turn that off, I think it ends up being like that. So we'll maybe just turn it on real low. Um, all right, so hello everyone. Thanks for joining, thanks for joining. Carla, thank you for the permission to leave my glasses on. I will be doing that. There are two things I want to mention real quick as we're uh, getting here. If you have not joined us before, make sure every Wednesday you follow at Melanie.bw and follow me here at Gacky Girls. My name is Ashley and we go live every Wednesday, <clears throat> unless we have a little break, at 9 Eastern, 8 Central, 6 Pacific Standard Time. Um, and we do that so that we can share blockhead stories with all of you uh, and meet new friends and just have a generally really fun time. So I see a lot of people jumping in. Hello, everybody. And I'm going to find our first guest because I know she is here. And if she could maybe just comment a little wave sign or something, I'll be able to find her quickly. Are you joining from your um, photography account or are you joining from your personal account? Um, Again, if you're just joining us or you've joined us every week, make sure up in the corner, there's a little arrow right here. That little arrow is going to tell you who's joining us and they're going to, um, you can follow them from there, which we want you to do because it's a big blockhead community and we wanna make sure that. Hello, hello. All right, I have. Charlene, oh, you have, you have green eyes too. I do, I have my, my good light because my uh, fan light is not good. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, sitting in a basement. Um, so I have a little bit of like a window light, if you can see over there. Otherwise I have to use this ring light or I look like I'm in a cave. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. No, no, thank you, sir. So why don't you tell everyone, you've joined us before, but who you are and where you're joining us from. Uh, I am Charlene. I live in Long Beach. Uh, and uh, hey, girl, hey. I'm seeing a highs there. Uh, this is my photography page. I do uh, take a lot of concert pictures. I mean, I'm not a pro, but from my seat, I take concert pictures. So I figured it'd be easier just to join from this one. Yeah. Uh, I'm wearing my Depeche Mode shirt for Melanie, even though she's at The Cure, because we both us love us some Depeche Mode. So yes, I, I think, my Depeche Mode shirt. honestly, I think the last time that she missed Blockhead you and you joined us. She was at Depeche Mode, if I'm not. <laughs> so it's a very appropriate, uh, very appropriate uh, t shirt to wear for her. Yeah. Um, she messaged me. She said, I'm not avoiding you. I'm going to be here. I was like, it's fine. It's all good. 
<laughs> she did say that to me as well. She was like, I just want to make sure, like, I'm not trying to avoid Charlie. And I was like, uh, no one thinks you're trying to avoid Charlie. It's fine. No, it's We're good. Fine. Yes. And, and unfortunately, you know, like, there are times, I think, um, like, for my birthday, I wasn't on here because I was in Orlando at Disney World. And then, obviously, tonight she had concert tickets. So we want to come to you every week. But Sometimes it's just me and sometimes it's just her. So just, you, know. you are very, uh, we're very grateful that you were able to join us tonight and uh, be a, a, a little a beacon of conversation about BlockCon. You know, I'm here to help wherever I can. So yeah, I don't mind. We'll, we'll see you next time, Melanie. Yes. Well, and what I'll mention first before we get started is that you were on my so-called whatever this week talking about BlockCon as well. So we're going to have a little snippet of conversation. But if you guys love what uh, Charlene is sharing with all of us, please go and watch that whole episode or listen to the whole episode because it's yes, really, so, really good. <laughs> so my so-called whatever is uh, their website is my so-called whatever dot com. It's also available as my so-called whatever on Spotify, Apple, anywhere you find podcasts. So they, they did put a bunch of my clips from my TikTok on their website, nice. along with a ton of photos. So uh, feel free. I, lo I love talking to my Maine ladies, Maine as in they're from the state of Maine. So yeah. it was good to catch up with them. <laughs> and they're super, super fun. I've been on their show uh, one time as well. You've been on multiple times. Obviously, you're a contributor to, you know, to their program, essentially. But um, <laughs> they are wonderful, wonderful people who uh, everyone should go follow their podcast ASAP. I love um, okay, so you are joining us from your photography page, but quick share with everyone, what is your TikTok? Because that's how I actually found you, and it had nothing to do with new kids. Right, which is wild. So my TikTok <laughs> is charlene.michelle, so C-H-A-R-L-E-N-E dot Michelle. Um, if anyone follows you on TikTok, you can find me on your fan list. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, so that that's how I started, because I used to, I work for Whole Foods, and I used to work with uh, at one on the west side of LA and so we see a lot of celebrities so I tell a lot of stories about celebrities um but then separately new kids so which is amazing it's there's so much fun to watch okay so we're gonna get into uh your block con experience um and you've shared your block head origin story before but can you just kind of remind us what it is and then what keeps bringing you back to doing these really cool events so um i never saw them the first time around the new kids uh so the first time i saw them was in 2008 and um i didn't uh go to any other concerts again until 2015 uh just life and timing didn't work out mm -hmm. so uh in 2015 uh i saw them at one show and my friend said i'm gonna buy tickets for next week at the forum and i never thought to see a concert twice i thought oh you see a concert and that's it so I was like, if you go, I'll go. And so I got a, they had like a meet and greet. I was in the third row and that was my first like meet and greet with them. And I was like, oh yeah, you can go to more than one show in a tour. Okay, I think I wanna do that now. <laughs> so it wasn't until 2015 and it just was, you know, you know basic seats. Uh, but then in 2017, shout out to my so-called whatever again, uh, they found me on the internet and I'm like, who makes friends on the internet? I do. <laughs> so exactly. So uh, being that I know all these wonderful people, you included, who live everywhere, I'm like, well, you know, it's not easy to fly to all the states to see our friends, but if there's a new kids show and all my friends are going to be there, yeah. I might as well. For sure. And, uh, you know, once you get that bug of going to a show, it's like, fine. And then once you get to go to two shows, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I we're, not, we're not that far from uh, San Diego, but I haven't done any San Diego shows. So I'm like, well, maybe next time I'll do Los Angeles, Anaheim, and San Diego. Maybe, maybe I need to expand my California shows some more. Yeah, uh, that's, that's kind of the, the triangle here is uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, Des Moines, Minneapolis, Minnesota. And we kind of just travel in that circle because if you're going to go to one, why not go to all of them? <laughs> It's easy enough. Okay, so uh, you visited us before here on Blockhead U, um, and we got to meet at BlockCon, just like me and Melanie, which was really fun. What was your overall experience, or like maybe just as a little snippet of what you thought about the weekend? I thought it was great. I thought it was a ton of fun. Um, we had a good little group of people who were running around with silly shenanigans, including just literally sitting in the Hyatt, cracking 
hooking each other up to like yeah. 2 33 in the morning like no new kids there just us in the lobby being a bunch of goofy goop silly cheesy people and, and that, that was great uh as for uh as for the the panels and the concert first of all thank you new kids for all the deep cuts at the concert yeah. like that oh, was amazing so here, here's a question for you what was your favorite deep cut uh, joe in the striped black and white jacket oh in the dancing <laughs> He like, if those of you out there uh, are not familiar, um, during, it was Hanging Tough Live, he did that, did he not? Oh, oh it was the, uh, I call, it's not called the pay-per-view concert, but yeah, uh, oh, when yes. it was the pay-per-view concert, uh, I don't know the name of the tour, but he did it there. And I've never seen him do that live. So I was uh, thoroughly freaking out. <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And in the video, you could hear Jenny next to me say, breathe, because I was like this, going, oh my God, oh my God. Well, because I mean, it was this, that was kind of the start of their throwback outfit extravaganza. So it did kind of hit like, what is happening? Yes. What are we expecting now? This is a little bit crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was the throwback section was, it was absolutely mine as well. It was just unexpected. There were songs that I never thought I'd hear them play or sing in person ever. You know what I mean? Like what? Like what was one of them? Danny with this one's for the children was my big. Like, are you kidding? I've heard I, out of his own mouth to my face, he hates this one's for the children. So when that started, and he just grabbed, I was like, oh, this can <laughs> not get better. This is only going to get more insane. Um. Okay. Yeah. So, well, and speaking of the Joe outfit, that was also in the like vault area where they were showing. So uh, they had a, um, oh, someone's asking if I assigned a moderator. I did not. I don't know if Megs is here yet. Anyway, sorry guys, <laughs> I'm distracted. It's hard when there's only one of us. Um, so they had like a vault area or an area with- uh, All their outfits. Yeah. you. Can explain what 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 was going on there so it, it had tons of tour outfits uh and a lot of shoes uh like for example last last tours joe kind of deep cut uh sparkly uh tank top shirt thing um i i was a fan of it some people were like that looks like richard simmons i was like i like it you can it can all the neck bones that's fine by me um so uh, that along with a lot of their like jewelry and stuff like the bracelets and just things and jackets, um, some stuff from like previous tours to some of the stuff that was really old was all just kind of showcased. So you can kind of see all of the different outfits, Q uh, cruise outfits. I know was their togas were on that too. Yep. Um, but it was cool to see all the stuff. And then I did hear, I don't know the video or who said it, but that somebody gave one of the guys a bracelet on the last tour and it was part of the thing. So like, they must have worn it the whole thing. It's like, oh yeah, here's the stuff. So I was like, oh. my my guess is gonna be that was Donnie because he had the whole wrist full of bracelets last year. Every time someone gave him a new bracelet, he kind of tossed it right back on. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, so one of the reasons that we wanted to talk to you today was because you were one of the lucky, lucky, lucky people to get a VIP ticket to this event, and a lot of people do not either, you know, and again comment in the comments guys, but um, a lot of people have never done a VIP anyway. Mm -hmm. And if you have done a VIP, this one seemed to be a little different. Um, so tell us about your experience and what was similar or what was different to your past VIP ticket? Well, we were trying to get, and the thing is too, it's like, it's easy. If you have a group of like four or five, then it's kind of tricky to try to get that many in VIP. But if you break it up into groups of one or two, then you can, that's a little more manageable when it comes to the ticket buying. And so since we just got two, we were able to get two tickets at the end of the VIP section along the walkway, which happened to be right where the new kids box was, where they jumped up and were dancing on the box right there. Yeah. So I had a few people on some of my, my TikTok videos saying, oh, were you in the front row? I was like, well, technically no, because we were in the back row and they just happened to be there. Um, so what happened was, of course, thank you. Thank you, internet. We were trying to get groups together because you got to get a group of 10. So each guy has two girls or not girls, two people, you know, the room in there. Yep. Uh, but, um, so our group, we needed a John and two Dannys. So we were a group of seven. 
uh, there was a little kerfuffle where they announced premature, well, not prematurely, but beforehand, like, oh, there's going to be two rounds, group A and group B, and everyone's like, oh, freaking out. Uh-huh. I I was figuring, hold on, my phone's falling. Don't fall. Uh, okay. Well, but, so, but what you were saying is that happened like the week beforehand. So everyone had kind of discovered their photo groups, and then all of a sudden an email went out that said, your group A, your group B, these are photos on Friday or Saturday. And everyone and started freaking out. Wasn't the same. Uh, we were split up. And so we just kind of were like, well, if we have everybody together on Friday, are they really going to turn us away? So we didn't try to break us, break us, you know, break each other up or try to find new groups. We didn't do any of that. We're like, we'll just wait and see. And then they announced, okay, we're going to just do one, one, which made sense. Mm-hmm. So we got there and all of the information they'd sent us said 530. I'm sorry, my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fall. Uh, kind of fun if it did though. Uh, um, so everything said five thirty check in or six o'clock check in. Um, they had two different things of the information that they had sent us, and then our group was showing up around five. Uh, we had to check in on the side. They gave us different lanyards, and then we walked down these little steps. And they had a table that had snacks, like little bag chips, and like a big bag, a big bowl of like candies and stuff, and like uh, Oreos. Uh, they had uh, a, there was a bar there you could buy drinks, but we didn't buy drinks then. And so we were kind of on the hunt for to fill the three spots we needed. And a lot of groups were pretty much almost completely full. Mm-hmm. And um, we did come across a mom and 16 year old daughter who needed a group. So we kind of rearranged and then the daughter wanted to stand with Joe. So I was standing with Joe and the daughter and then the mom stood with uh, John. And so we were missing nine. We were really nine. We were missing one person. So they started pulling groups <coughs> early. It was like 505. Like, All right, line up. And we're like, that's not what they said. So, okay. Uh, but we still didn't have 10. So everybody who did have groups of 10 went into the theater where the concert was Yeah. and they kind of had a line. They had you sit in your groups and they had to sit in the chairs and then they slowly brought the people onto the stage, which was nice. Cause I've never done bar stools. When you do bar stools for the photo, it's usually on the concert stage, yes. not just in the side with just like a gray background or whatever. Uh, so it was on the stage. You could see their whole background, the, you know, the, block on info um but we only had nine people so it really got down to i think there was either four or five groups of nine like that we were left and so they kept saying break each other up and make each other groups of 10 and we're like that doesn't the math isn't mathing like <laughs> there will be no groups of 10. that's a really that's a really good point too because some people are like absolutely i have to stand next to this particular guy so when you have a group of nine it means there's one guy you don't have someone with, and someone from another group isn't going to step in. And even if they did, they could already be standing with that guy with their group of friends. Yeah. And so there'd be one group if they did that, like there wasn't even enough people left to do that. Then you'd end up with a smaller group. So they're like, okay, groups of nine are fine. Uh, although at the end of the, fo- of the photo shoot, I did see one of the, one of the employees had like five VIP envelopes with your name on it. Uh-huh. So that's what they gave us that had our lanyards. So I'm like, so five people didn't show up. Oh. Ooh, because they, they had, I don't, I don't know. I just saw the guy walking by with the envelopes, exactly like the envelopes they gave us. So I don't know. So what happened was, um, we did, we did make a group. We had um, a girl who came all the way from Ireland, uh, wow. and then um, just a mix of people. And uh, one of our girls, Gabby, I think she's in the group. Hi, Gabby, you're our friend now. We claim her. Uh, she, she had never uh, done a meet and greet, and so since I found her on the internet, I was like, you need yeah. a group. I'll take you. We need a group. Get her with us. She wanted to stand with Jordan. So um, we were waiting and, you know, I try to be helpful. So for people who've never done a meet and greet, you think you're okay. And then your adrenaline goes crazy yes. and your brain stops working. That's usually how it works. So uh, we were trying to keep Gabby cool. Like, okay, just breathe, make sure you say your name. If you can't say anything, say your name. It's fine. Uh, and so we got to see everyone go up and um, take the pictures. And usually they're trying to get people quickly through but there was a lot of time from the photo Mm -hmm. to the concert so it seemed like they were kind of going slow which was nice that it wasn't like you know like all right yeah Yeah. and and for those of you who have not been in a vip or a meet and greet it goes so fast it's literally you're in photo you're out you might get a hug with each guy but there's no conversation you're not going to say something to someone you're not standing by even the person you're standing by you have a minuscule amount of time to be like, hi, how are you? Glad to be here. And you're off. Yeah. It's not, 
Yeah, you don't you don't have have time to have deep conversations with each of them. You don't have time for all of that. So so you felt like there was a little bit more time at this particular event. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. And so just waiting for our turn and watching the other groups go up, seeing like people talking like, oh blah, 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 and then a hug, and then maybe some more conversation as each of the people went through. So even just like witnessing, like, okay, so you have a little bit more time than normal, which is nice, instead of just like photo, ready, photo, photo, and then you know, you're out the door. Um, so uh, that was pretty nice that uh, they had it like that. And so the, the groups of nine, we ended up being like the last one. So we were in there for at least 30 minutes, wow. maybe more watching the other groups ahead of us, which is fun, you know, just uh-huh. look at them right there on the stage, hey, you know, there. Um, and so, yeah, so we went up and we took the pictures and uh, we, um, I, I said this on my so-called whatever podcast and anyone wants to do it can do it. I did an accent and bowed to Jordan. I said, uh, <laughs> I said hello good sir and then I did like one of these <laughs> and he's like hi and then I gave him a hug and I'm like I did that why I don't don't know why there, you, you've got to always have at least one meet and greet where you do something and you're like what did I just do in front of these people who I look up to and have since I was a child and I just you know it's like I know I know what I'm gonna say to Joe and then Donnie's real easy to talk to because Donnie's Donnie but like I don't really I don't plan ahead for everybody else no i have i have met john in a meet and greet four times now and every time in my head i'm like i'm gonna tell him i've been on hgtv too and then i've never said it i blank out i don't know what is happening i've never talked to the man i give him a nice big hug and i go and i'm just grateful for the opportunity yeah i was the only cruise i went on was cruise x and so that one i was like this is my first cruise and i said that to all of them uh except for to joe because um i'm friendly with a friend of his name who's a comedian named graham elwood and i was like is graham elwood on this boat and he's like no i don't think he's here no i was like okay i just was checking but let me know was just like you know um, that's, that's a good like in like oh i know this person who not everyone's gonna know and so i'm gonna name their name <laughs> just checking he's single you know it'd be smart for this you know fit single guys 50 you know to be on a cruise with a bunch of ladies um but yeah so we went through and um I, yeah for danny i just said like um uh, like oh you know i had to come for the first one it's gonna be awesome and he's like yeah yeah and i always say i'm charlene from long beach as if it's gonna stick maybe maybe it does maybe it doesn't but i say i'm charlene from long beach so i did say that to him and then donnie was next um and i showed him i said oh mr mr Wahlberg, i am thankful you're here and then he's like hey and he's like let's get some d on in and so he's like, we're like rubbing our tattoos together and uh i said uh i said yes i'm charlene from long beach and he's like the lbc uh and so then he just gives a hug because you know he's donnie and he's great and he fixed my phone so it doesn't fall and then i did the hello good sir to jordan because because uh and then I, I get to joe and um i have uh being spoiled inside Southern California and going to Joe shows because he lives in Southern California. Mm-hmm. I've seen him close enough together where he'll see me or well, I'll, 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 I, some type of meet and greet and he'll be like, hey, like recognition. And then I've also seen him where it's like, hi, like real generic. Like, I, he doesn't, mm-hmm. you know, I go to just enough to get recognition sometimes, but not enough for it's like my friends like he knows your name, right? I'm like, no. Yeah, right. <laughs> no. Well, he knows you, right? I'm like, no, he does not know me. If I'm but I'm lucky, a light bulb will go off of like, oh, I have met this person in the past. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's all and we so, can <laughs> Yes. And so oh, that happened at BlockCon. Because um, I did get into his 50-person uh, tiny show he did at the end of December before he did Carnegie. So, um, and, you know, I'm a, tat- I'm a tattooed girl with, with blue hair. I mean, I'm a little bit identifiable, right? And so when I went, I got to Joe, um, he did, did give me the, hey, it's good to see you. But it was the recognition face. It wasn't the generic face. And I was like, yes, 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 yes. And so uh, I was going to stand with him for the picture. And so as we're like getting set for the picture, I said, um, I'm really glad you're going to other places to take po- to do concerts. I said, but if you want to come back to Hollywood for us and go to the bourbon room, we'll show up. And so I like posed with him. And he's like, really? I said, yeah, we'll be uh-huh. there. OK. And he's like, all right, all right. And so then we took the picture hug and then um then when i got to uh john he was talking to someone but i wanted to give him a hug and mention i said i'm the person that gave you the photo like we were making out at the mixtape tour and he's like that's right i wish i had 
saved what the episode was that you were on before or our episode what what live you joined us on before because you told that story right or that where in where it looks like i'm making out with john when it was a second hug it was a hug like this in the back of a photo of my friend with jordan and we're like this close and we're both smiling at each other and it looks like we're gonna make out so i gave him the photo and <laughs> at the meet and greet i did at the at the mixtape tour but he's like that's right he started laughing and then hugged me and then we got off and so uh, I checked in with uh, Gabby. I'm like, did you say your name? And she's like, no. And I'm like, that's fine. It's fine. A hundred percent fine. Yeah, this is what gets us to do another meet and greet is now we're like, we messed up that one. Realistic. I, I pay for another one. Let's I said, it's, it's okay. Cause your body was on Jordan night. You know, you, you feel your body was touching Jordan night's body. Uh, and the photo came out great. So I was like, fine. you don't have to say your name. Uh, Fine. but aside from that, like we had time between it, we had time to go eat dinner and then we went to the concert. But, um, as a whole, like with the, the VIP being kind of leisurely, which was nice. And then the concert with all the deep cuts and then the prom bunch of silly, goofy dancing shenanigans. I was like this, I would do this again in a heartbeat. Like this was so much fun. Yeah. And I, I think, and then with the panels, with them sharing as much as they did at the panels, I was like, this is worth everything. Like I am worth the price people people were saying about the price but i, I mentioned no. it previously but it was cheaper for me to fly to chicago and do that versus going all the way to uh florida and, and the yeah i would say it, it's gonna cost me as much to go to the iowa state fair for a concert and a meet and greet as i paid for a three-day experience worth every penny if they do it again i will be there will you be there yeah, logistically, <laughs> like you know, mentally we'll be there if you know doesn't always work out. <laughs> yeah, as but, long as everything works out again, I, I will go again. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't. I I had so much fun. It was great, and then everything was so close. And then even uh, the variety of hotels to choose from was was yeah. easy, and it just was really efficient. I think they would probably do more things because there was like a lapse in time on Friday. Like our our stuff didn't get started till five, but I'm sure like people who just went to the concert that didn't start till yeah. eight. So we went to Wahlburgers, but um, like we had, like, I'm sure that they would probably add more, but like, I think the location was great. I liked that it was central. Yeah. Um, I, I thought I, we, I had a bunch of fun. Highly recommend. Two enthusiastic thumbs up. I agree. Okay. So one thing we haven't talked about with your meet and greet was that there was a special area at the prom for VIP. So you had your own special room. Um, well, Actually, let me go back a second. During the meet and greet, there was some special decorations and stuff for the VIP that those of us who didn't have VIP did not experience. Can you tell us about kind of what that looked like behind the scenes? So do you mean, well, in the waiting room? Because yeah. they had like, okay, so yeah, they had like, uh, uh, by the candy table and snacks. Uh, they did have a bunch of balloons that were kind of like 80s style. And then they had big printouts that had um, like music lyrics from like each, like a bunch of different songs throughout the whole entire thing. Um, so those were the decorations they had. They had balloons upstairs. There was upstairs and downstairs area. Uh, and so it was just a bunch of different, like it had like click, click, click with some more, some, some phrases. I took pictures of them, but I'm completely blanking them now. I think about you in the summertime, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and so that was there. As for prom, um, there was a section near the front. Now um, I do, I did say that I did want it to be just a little bit brighter. Just, it could have been a little, they turned the lights up just a little bit, but next to, so they had the stage in the middle of the floor. They had uh -huh. the little dance stages around it. And then they had the main one against the wall with the sparkly backdrop. Yes. To the right of that, there was a section for VIP and a bar. So there were tables there, standing tables, no chairs, but um, there, but it was kind of hard to see from there. So I think they should have, kind of smooshed it a little more to the front that's because what, like i about i was curious because it was it was literally off the stage like the main stage when they walked off it looked to us in the uh in steerage or whatever you want to call it <laughs> it looked like they were walking directly off the side of the stage into the vip meaning vip was kind of set to the back of it is that a little well like it's not like jenny mccarthy was chilling over there like she was no. in the back back yeah like, we were and it was like what I, I, I did a lot of walking around. I wasn't really in the middle where the stages were. So yeah. like, I was like, this is fun. There's a lot of space. This is great. 
Um, I'm going to slow dance to Spandau Ballet with Carmen over here. Like it just was, you know, silliness, but I never really got in the middle, but I did go around the side, uh, kind of closer to the front of the stage, but it was in front of the VIP section. And okay. I like got, I got a video of the guys, but I'm like, I'm closer here. Like, this is like the VIP, this is like VIP access, uh -huh. but like, I'm closer, like literally standing right here. So they could have just smushed it a little bit forward. It was easy, like going and getting drinks because there was like no line for that. But like we we didn't really stay in there too long because we were just walking around and being outside versus oh, sure. just that little like yeah, just that little yeah. Section. It's funny you mentioned the lighting because up in the front of the stage, the lighting was very dim. But in the back, back by it's kind of the the bars for uh, the rest of us, um, it was quite bright. Mm -hmm. They had some overhead lights on, and so. Yeah, it did seem like the venue was um, the venue was amazing. The city of Rosemont did such an incredible job of like helping that event happen the way it did. But that yeah, a little, little bit more like um, focus lighting, you know what I'm saying? Like on the floor, you know, Just a maybe spend thought. a little bit more on lighting design, but otherwise yeah. fantastic. I, I, I did see in a group on Facebook that someone's like, they should have had tables and chairs. I was like, that would have been smart too. It's a prom. Yeah. People want to sit down. Yeah. So yeah, they should have they should have tables and chairs and a little more lighting. We're all getting up there, you know. We need a little rest every once in a while. So yeah, you know, I, I was in flats, but my feet still were tired. So yeah, I'm looking forward to if we get a survey. You know, after the cruise, we get a survey, and so uh -huh. I'm looking forward to that happens. But anyway, okay. Um, so were you able to get any special uh, selfies? back in the vip area or no at oh i i actually didn't get any selfies with the guys at all like i i i did share on a couple of facebook pages like oh donnie released his his selfie from his phone but i we didn't see any of them close enough outside of just the meet and greet uh which is fine um yeah. but i'm glad that all the people who were able to get selfies did mm -hmm. um i uh gabby i'm gonna tell your story again because i'm proud of you she's in the chat uh, so we were hyping her up and like, you know, trying to get her set and on her flight back to Los Angeles, Joe was in her, was like, she got bumped up to first class and Joe was behind her. Wow. And I give, I am so proud of her because at the, at the, they got out and then she asked one more selfie and he took an amazing selfie with her. And I was like, yes, you did it. You win block God. Like this is how you do it. I was saying we. We all have, you know, one of those moments, hopefully, you know, we all hope to have one of those moments and it's really all you can expect and you can't really expect to have it again. So when it happens like that, it's like the universe was gifting her with this opportunity. You're in first class with Joe. She had the guts to say, can I have one more selfie? And she got it. And it looks, and he, of course, of course, he's amazing. And he's like, you know, I was like, absolutely. And like the picture looks great. And it's a good spot. Some of them are good smiles. Like, it's just, it's funny. Cause like it was. I, some of my favorite moments didn't even involve me at BlockCon. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I'm just like, and they, I came home. Oh, let me tell you what happened to my friend. It was so good. I did that for a, a couple stories of my husband, including my friend, Kelly, 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 Kelly. She, uh, she told us that her high school prom was at the Hyatt 25 years ago. Wow. And that she didn't have any fun because she was too nervous to dance, didn't have any fun. Awesome. And I was like, oh, she's like, it was in this hotel. Fast forward to prom. And Joe pulls her up and she's dancing at prom with Joe McIntyre to I've had the time of my life. Like, could that be better written as a Hollywood movie? Like here you are like, oh, I went, I went to prom and I didn't have any fun. And now it's fast forward, you're dancing with Joe McIntyre to I've had the time of my life. Is this the ending of Dirty Dancing? Like <laughs> what is real life? I, I, like, I love I, that. I have on Blockhead, you pitch Donnie a lifetime movie like a Christmas movie, but that's a great, that would be an amazing lifetime movie. Like how, or Hallmark movie, like prom's terrible. 25 years later, you are dancing with Joey McIntyre. Two, I've had the time in my life. It, it, it wrote itself. It's, it's writing itself in front of us. <gasps> yeah. Okay. So yeah. um, wrap up Blockcon. Anything else that you want? I mean, that, that was a great share right there, but any other little tidbits or anything that you want to share with everyone watching right now? Um, I, I do think, I know some people said that they were only going to go to like some of the panels or like, oh, maybe I'll just miss one of the panels. It was, it was really, it felt so close to like 
we it felt like we were close to them the way that they were telling stories how every single one of them got choked up at least during one of the stories like um and that they you know were you know busting each other's balls and being funny and just it like my, I said, my face hurt, like from them being ridiculous, especially at the end in that sleeping bag where they were zipping each other up and rolling around. Like my face, I left and I was like, oh, my cheeks hurt from laughing. So the, <coughs> the cruise is fun. I've, like I said, I've only been on one. The cruise is fun, but it feels more like chaotic. This felt more kind of like, oh, we're just hanging out with new kids on the block. They're just chatting on a stage. Very much. So much so even um them going out into the boxes and taking individual pictures which you know i don't know if that was planned or not but it just it felt accessible in a way but also the panels you couldn't leave yeah the concert you couldn't leave because yeah. the next second could have been something you did not expect to see um and that would have been <clears throat> oh so really sad to have someone said when did jordan get choked up uh was it when they asked him about um i'll be loving you forever like what does that I song mean to you about, is that when he got choked up i think so he was talking about how meaningful it is and that it has several you know donnie mentioned that that's a song that his mom really loved and danny i'm sorry danny mentioned it was mm -hmm. a song his mom really loved. and so uh he started talking about it too and just saying like you know he's very vague about it he said there was many many times in his life where that song has meant something pretty um and Pretty he was saying, like, don't cry. Don't, it's ugly when you cry. Don't cry. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so, uh, there's a lot of lives out there. People, you can go on YouTube. You can go on Instagram, you know, Facebook groups. Uh, a lot of people have shared those things. But it's really, it's worth watching, in my opinion. It's worth watching any of the snippets you can from that weekend. Because that in itself is going to sell the tickets for BlockCon, too. Like, I think so. I think so. I think so. I highly recommend. Uh, the only bit of advice I would say is everyone who didn't wear sunblock at the baseball field, bring sunblock. I'm still a little <laughs> burned, I think. Still got a little bring. from it. I, I try to go vampire to like protect my tattoos, but seeing all the different like super bright people, I was like, oh, they're going to be burned. They're, they're so hot. Um, I do, I would, I would recommend it. I, I, I think it was great. I thought it was a ton of fun for everything we did. Yeah. Um, and uh, I want to see if they give us an option to get a yearbook. They did ask for our photos, you know, like what happened with that? Is it late? Is it going to be printed? Is it something digital? You know, I'm just wondering. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, I, given the opportunity that so many people had that maybe, maybe they live somewhere where the new kids never tour. Yeah. And then it's like, hey, we can get up to Rosemont. And then they had a blast. So for any first timers, I just was just like, if you, I, I, I always get so excited, like, yeah, I've been a New Kids fan since the 80s. I didn't see them to 2008. So let's say you're a New Kids fan as of two years ago. And now you're like, let's do this. Like, it, it just makes me so happy. Like, I don't care if you're old school. I don't care if you're new school. Like, if you're in it, welcome. Yes. Welcome to the, the Blockheads. I didn't like that name for at first, being Blockhead. I was like, oh, uh -huh. Blockhead. I love it. it I love it. It really doing this Instagram live for me to embrace being a blockhead. And uh, it is, it's a, it's a, it's a, not, I won't say sisterhood, that's not fair. It's a, a, a community of yes. people who, for the most part, are here to enjoy each other and get to know each other and embrace this silly kooky thing that we're all super, super into. So it's, it's been really fun. So, yeah. okay, when are you at your next blockhead so or? It's adjacent event. So the next one I'm going to is the uh, the 30th here in Southern California. I'm going to the Yamava show. Uh, uh, they, you know, that was the first one was the 30th they announced. So I got a ticket. I got a ticket for that. Um, but I know a bunch of people going. Although yeah. if you don't know people going, I do recommend going to things by yourself because you're going to meet people and it's going to be fun anyway. That's our next guest. Our next yeah. guest. Please share that with us. Good. Yeah. So I got one ticket, but there's people going. And so um, when they announced, I grew up about 10 miles west of there in the city of Rialto. So I'm like staying at my parents' house. <laughs> like, I don't have to worry about a hotel. I'm like, I'm like Mom, that I'm going to be over there on, on the 30th. Um, yes, my cousin says, yeah, for SoCal. Yes, for SoCal. Oh, my cousin Deanna's going too. I got two cousin blockheads. And one of them was like, oh, Deanna, good. are you going to go to Yamaba? And now she is. Um, but uh, on the 29th, they announced that show. And there's still tickets if people want to go. But uh, my store, like I said, I work for Whole Foods. We're doing inventory that night. My boss is like, absolutely not. 
you have to be at work. <laughs> I said, all right, no problem. As long as I'm off for the 30th, it's fine. I'll be here. I won't go the 29th. Uh, so yeah, I'm doing Yamava. And then I'm not doing any of Joe's shows that are out of California. Um, but when he, when he announces any more Hollywood ones, I'll go to that. Sounds good. I am still trying to get to one and he's going to be in Minneapolis. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to convince my husband to take a little long weekend and maybe he can visit all of his friends. We used to live there. Um, ah. and I, maybe he can like just come to one Joe show with me, you know? Yeah. See what I'm about. You know, yeah. Uh, anyway. my, my, my darling husband did offer that. He's like, oh, you want me to go with you? And I thought he was joking. And then he asked again. I was like, oh, are you serious? I'm like, no, you don't, no. You don't have to do that. That's been my have to go to new concerts. I'm like, I don't need you to see me like that. We've been married for 17 years, but you don't need to see that side of myself. It's yeah. fine. Well, well, he he doesn't listen to new kids when I'm not here. So I'm like, I, no, we'll get. And so speaking of, speaking of Depeche Mode, they're coming back here in December. And I was like, you listen to Depeche Mode. I'll get us tickets for that. So I got us tickets. It's like the week of my birthday. Thanks. Actually, Melanie's going to be in Southern California. Yeah. That week too. I'm going to try to see if I can work out and see her again. Uh, we're going to different Depeche Mode shows. But I was like, we'll get tickets for Depeche Mode. You don't have to come with me to new kids. Thank <laughs> you for the offer but I want you to go to music you actually listen to when I'm not here. <laughs> Amazing. Well, we hope to hear about that experience in the future. And thank you so much for taking your time. Like you said earlier, we could talk, I think you said this on your TikTok, but we could probably yes. talk for, like hours, for hours about this stuff. Literally. But um, we do have another guest joining us who uh, is also from the Midwest and probably has some stuff. And you also have a family to get back to. So yes, I have an almost 10 year old. <laughs> yes. And they, you know, they need their routine, nighttime routine and everything. So appreciate your time and we will hopefully talk to you soon. And hopefully I'll see you soon. Yes. Uh, anytime you need me, let me know. I'm a yay. ham. I'll chat. Like love, said, I'll talk to you uh, forever. All right. Mwah. Bye, babe. Bye. Thank you. Let me hit the thing. I got you. Click. You got me? Okay. I got you. Okay. Yeah, Charlene, I could talk to her forever. So we, we met. I, um, at BlackCon for the first time, and then uh, she had the best outfit. We, sh we didn't even talk about it. We could have talked again for hours, but um, she had the best 80s prom outfit at prom. Uh, so again, if you do not already, go follow Charlene. Her business page is what she was using, or her photography page, um, but she posted some great videos from BlackCon, so you want to go check that out. All right, so I am looking for our next guest here, and I see her there. And I'm going to pull her in. And I'm very excited about this. Um, we do have some questions in the chat. Um, so thank you for everyone who submitted questions. We will get to those, I promise. Um, just trying to make sure we can get going here a little bit. So hello. Hi. OK, so tell us your name and from where you are joining us. OK. God, <laughs> I'm trying to like position myself here. Um, <laughs> So I am Tracy, and I am in Schaumburg, Illinois, so not too far from Rosemont, where the Block Hunt was. And um, what else did you ask me? That, <laughs> that was it? That was it. <laughs> okay, so uh, tell us your Blockhead origin story. How did you become a Blockhead? Oh, my God. Um, so... Well, it started when I was eight years old at my best friend Amy's house, and we watched The Right Stuff, um, the video on uh, VH1 or something like that. And then I saw Jordan Knight, and it was over. So that that's how I became a blockhead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I can confirm you are you are a party girl. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Okay, so prior to prior to Black Con, have you been to any cruises or just concerts? What was kind of your your history with getting back into the fandom after all the time? Yeah, so I basically went to my first concert in 2013 in Chicago at the United Center. So <laughs> um, it was basically like on a whim, and it was so hard to find people that would want to go to concerts with me of bands that I like. So I got my friend to go with me and that was when boys to men, 98 degrees, um, vanilla. I, I think I don't know if that was the night vanilla I showed up. I think so. So it was hilarious, um, that he showed up, but anyways, so it was just like, it was a great time. And then I went with another coworker of mine 
like a few years later and she was a blockhead like she was majorly like her and her best friend like they always wanted to like meet the new kids they wrote to oprah oh. and she was like i i'm trying to get these new kids tickets i'm like you're gonna go new kids on the block i'll go she's like you'll go with me i'm like of course so i went with her and then uh last year i took my cousin for the first time her first new kids concert um and we had a blast she's a joe girl so it was a uh, it was a great time so what uh, it sounds like having coworkers or having people in your life being like oh i'm trying to do this you're like oh i will absolutely go with you was that kind of a catalyst to get you back into going to this type of thing a little bit um but i feel like as i got older i decided not to wait anymore mm -hmm. because life is short and you don't know what's going to happen like a year from now so you have to seize those opportunities in those moments i mean to veer off track um so i lived in california i lived in la for a little while before COVID hit okay. um and i'm a huge um a fan of another boy band called the monkeys yeah. and <laughs> I got to see them in concert. And it's funny when Charlene said that she does the triangle or she always thinks about doing the LA, San Diego, Anaheim, like to see the new kids. That's what I did when Mickey uh, Dolan's and Mike Nesmith were touring. I went by myself. I went to LA show, met a ton of people. They're like, why aren't you going to San Diego? Why aren't you going to Anaheim? I'm like, I guess I'm going to spend all my money. So I'm <laughs> just like, made a ton of friends. I have friends all over the world because of this. So when I went by myself to BlockCon, I'm like, you know what? I'm an extroverted person. I know how to talk to people. I'll meet people. It's not like hard for me to talk to people. So yeah. Well, okay. For those of you watching who do not know, the Monkees are a musical group from like the late 60s, right? Early 70s. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Monkees fan too. So I, I've never been to a concert, but Dave Jones was, you know, my heart. Um, so, uh, and they had a TV show in the seventies that was very popular yeah. every at night and everything like that. So yeah, very fun, uh, fun way to kind of get from that to this. Oh no. Well, my mom, like she, when I was a monkeys fan, she thought like, wait, she's like, how, how do you like them? Where do you see them? I'm like, they're on MTV. And I thought everything on MTV was new. So I'm like, well, I'm going to marry Michael Nesmith when I'm older. And she's like, well, I like Davy Jones and I was little. And no, you're not going to marry Michael Nesmith. So at that point, he was 50s probably, right? <laughs> he was, oh, back then? Yeah, he was like in his 40s. She's like, no, you're not going to marry Michael that Nesmith. The oh new God. kids happened, right? New kids on the block happened. And she's like, oh, finally, age appropriate. They're 10 years older, but, you know, who cares, right? Um, Close enough. So, yeah. Yeah, so I guess my love for boy bands started with the monkeys and then segued to to new kids. But new kids, I was a fan a lot longer when I was younger because, I mean, when they started in like 88, 89, mm -hmm. like, you know, when they started really becoming big. I mean, I remember like my 10th birthday party, I got Jordan doll. Like yeah. we had a sleepover. We all were the new kids on the block, like pajama shirts and dance the new kids and it was a whole new kids party. So <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Which many of us probably had something similar. It was oh, the yeah. time, time of our lives. That was the okay. highlight of my life. Yeah. Yes. The Jordan doll at my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what you, you mentioned earlier, you went to BlackCon solo, bought yes. your ticket, traveled alone. What motivated you or inspired you to do that other than saying life is short, let's just do it. Yeah. Well, well, so it's funny. I saw it, um, like I saw it on Facebook or something like that. And my cousin, who I took to the concert last year for her birthday, she texted me. She's like, "Oh my god, are you going to this?" And I'm like, "I don't know. Like, it's a lot of money, blah blah blah." You know, I was kind of like trying to talk myself out of it. But then I'm like, "Well, would you go if you were in town? Would you do this?" She's like, "Well, yeah." But then she couldn't go with me because she was going on vacation with her kids to Florida, a whole big thing. So she's like, if I wasn't going to that, I would definitely go. So I'm like, well, it's in Rosemont. It's not that far. I don't have to pay for a hotel. I don't have to pay for a flight. 
Like, it, why it was kind of like, why not? Yeah, I have nothing else planned. I'm probably going to spend the same amount of money if I were to go away for the weekend. So why not go? Um, I had never, and this is my first convention ever. I've never been to like a convention. I never went to any of their cruises. Mm -hmm. So like, <laughs> I was so tired. Like to say how tired I was like Sunday morning oh, when I made yeah. the ball game, I was just like, I was just done. <laughs> Yeah, it's, not, it's not like going to a concert where you go to the concert, you have, maybe you're tired the next day. This was a no. three day extravagance. Right. Plus you're just waiting in a lot of long lines. Yeah. Um, and then I went to Walcon Thursday yeah. and I waited in line for like four hours and I didn't get in because everyone was waiting for Donnie. Donnie shows up and at first I'm like, well, I'm just going to wait to see if I get in. And I saw people going around, you know, to the back of the restaurant and coming back all excited. I'm like, what's going on? Oh, he's taking selfies. So I'm standing with these girls in line. They're both from Boston, both huge Donnie fans. And they're both wearing like the, the self, you know, Celtic jerseys, all this shit. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, I couldn't be with more perfect girls in line. So they go, well, we're going to go. And I'm like, I'll go with. There were so many people crowding him. The oh, one girl. Yeah. Oh yeah, the one girl went, she comes back out and I'm standing with her friend and I'm like, you know, I think I'm just gonna wait. There's too many people. Her friend's like, are you nuts? You gotta go. She's like, just hang on to the back of my friend and she'll lead you, she'll lead you to Donnie. So that's what I did. I held on to her friend. <laughs> Little <laughs> made the path. What, is it, what is it called in racing? You were, uh, there's like a word for it where you, you go right behind another racer so that the wind is going over you and you can I don't put it know the term yeah i don't know but i was like else? i was just hanging on and it was like going through just a sea of like women that were just like i don't want to meet donnie and so i go to stand next to him and take a picture and he, and he was just so lovely and you know you don't think like in the moment because you like you said like even the meet and greets happen so fast yeah like you don't have time to say anything. And I do like know somebody who knows him, who is a friend of his that used to work with him. And she was like, oh, if you meet Donnie, tell me, you know, blah, blah, blah. I had no, that was not even in my mind when I walked up to him. So <laughs> I like go to say hi and like, you know, we take a picture, he's like, love ya. I walk away and like my knees buckled. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so like, you, I was dead. You, we call it swerving, right? Did you swerve Donnie? that moment where you're like Jordan you know no Jordan's got my heart but Donnie you know I like Donnie Donnie his personality is like he reminds me of just like you know my brother's friend or something like that like he's just a really <laughs> outgoing like come on let's like oh let's get together let's do this and that um but so what's funny is I posted the picture and I tagged Wahlburgers I posted on my Instagram and then they posted it on their Instagram. And I was so that the only selfie that they posted with him for like hours. It's a great tip <laughs> because if you go to the clubhouse, the Black Hat Clubhouse, which is the St. Charles Wahlburgers, they tell you if you go on a normal day, hey, make sure and tag us and tag Donnie. Mm -hmm. So they- That's what I did, yeah. It's amazing that you were able to get yours shared there because it, it, that's really what they're looking for. And yeah. Obviously, gave them what they were. I was looking. standing in line, and I, I just did it really fast. All of a sudden, I look, and I see Wahlburgers added your picture to their story. And I was like, what? Yeah. Great feeling. Crazy. I mean, for the first time, and it's funny, because I've never been to Wahlburgers. That was my first time. And I used to work in St. Charles. I worked five minutes away from there. Never wow. been. The first time I go, I meet Donnie. Like you said. You Things are meant to happen in life sometimes. Yep. So. yep. Yeah. Um, I know Deb, uh, Seth, Chef Ram, who has joined us before, um, she has mentioned one of the things I always say in life is good things always happen to me. That's a perfect mm -hmm. example. I go to Walgreens for the first time. I have had the opportunity, but the first time I go, what happens? I meet Donnie Wahlberg. And obviously, you know, we knew he would be there, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not everyone got a selfie with him. Not everyone got their selfie shared on 
the St. Charles Alberger's face. There you go, yeah. (laughs) I was very grateful. Yeah. Okay, so a lot of people, um, you know, have concerns or questions about, can I do this kind of thing alone? So I would love to kind of pick your brain a little bit about what it was like, you know, obviously you are a very outgoing personality, so not everyone can do that, but um, being there on your own, Yes. What was your experience uh, meeting other blockheads, um, you know, running through uh, the the crowd of people not oh, yeah. really knowing? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, from my experience being a Monkees fan, you know, there, there are some people that, you know, like, there are people that, of course, know a lot more about the band than you or a lot more about the guys than you or, you know, they've been to all the cruises. They've done this and this and that. But, like, yeah. when I met you and your friends, like, I didn't feel like, oh, God, like, you know, I, I'm I'm beneath them because I didn't do this. Like, no one made me feel that way. And I met, like, people that were, um, like, a mother and a father with their child. And I'm like – like with the dad and the son I'm like you like dad and son I'm like you like the new kids they're like yeah I like the new kids like I met so many different people that you know were just really welcoming and really nice and then they would like listen to my stories I'd hear their stories and you know as far as like other people too I met these other women in line at Wahlburgers and they were so nice yep and they didn't buy tickets for BlockCon yet they were kind of waiting because oh, wow. tickets they think we're going down. Okay. okay. So, okay, there's like 4,000 people at this damn convention. So, <laughs> I'm like, I had just like walked through. I waited two hours, uh, you know, for two hours to get my merchandise, all my t-shirts and stuff. And then I walked through the, you know, displays and everything. Um, and I was just like taking it all in, looking at the pictures, everything. And, and I was like, you know, meeting people like, oh, you alone too? We like took each other's pictures and like the doll boxes or whatever. And then they would kind of walk away like, okay. And I'm like, no one wants to be my friend. <laughs> so, so I'm then leaving. Go, huh? go, no, finish your story. Sorry. No, so I'm leaving. Um, I'm like, I'm just going to go get a bite to eat and get a drink before the concert starts. And I'm walking out. And like I said, there's 4,000 people at this convention. Yeah. Okay. In walks the two women I met at Walcon in line. That's the perks. And we both look at each other. We're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we start laughing. So I'm like, I know you, right? So then I'm walking around with them and they're like helping me take pictures of me, like, you know, kissing Jordan's like picture, you know, like all this stuff. <laughs> it was so much fun. And I'm so happy that I met them because like, you know, I got that experience with them and then I never saw them again because it's such a, you know, crowded place and I tried to find them. I couldn't find them. So, well, <laughs> there you go. The magic of social media, you're probably going to run into one of their TikToks or one of their Instagrams and it's going to happen. Yeah. And, you know, personal experience, once you see someone, like the Chris is a good ex- example of this. There are people who I have talked to online and I see them one time on the cruise and now I see them everywhere on the cruise. It's like you running into, you know, that group. Oh no. Well, it's I like get. the monkey oh, concert. Yeah. It's like yeah. that where I'll like, if I'm going, I went and saw Mickey Dolan's in Milwaukee. If I'm going to Milwaukee, I know I'm going to see certain people there. If I'm going to LA, I know I'm going to see certain people there. Um, this one woman, one time I'm sitting next to her and I'm like, Oh, hi, I'm Tracy. She's like, yeah, I know who you are. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, you're Tracy Fuller you're part of the fandom i'm like (laughs) maybe i'll get there with new kids maybe (laughs) though is that yeah there's people who are known in the fandom but no one should and i hope i'm so glad to hear your experience that it doesn't matter and i did a tiktok about this today like it doesn't matter if you've been to three concerts or been to every concert you are a blockhead if that's what you want to call yourself you are a fan of this community and you know I think I asked you, I'm going to ask you again, when are, when are we to see you at a new kids event again? In Iowa. Are you going? I'm going to Iowa girl. I'm going to be in the pit. Yes. Okay. So we were having just a quick story for everyone. We were having lunch. So uh, I'll piece it back in. My friends and I were having dinner before the concert. Tracy was there sitting 
talking and my friends invited her over. I think I was in the bathroom or saying hi to other people or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I don't and there's this person I've never met sitting at the table. We <laughs> immediately were all just like, you are fun. You're welcome with us anytime. And then after the baseball game or the mushball mm -hmm. game, we had lunch mm -hmm. again. And at mm -hmm. that, you were like, I, I think I'm going to go to the Iowa State Fair. And I was like, you're going to the Iowa State Fair. Yeah, you looked at the directions for me. You, <laughs> you, you planned out the whole route. You're like, okay, yeah. it takes a... Uh, four hours and uh 32 minutes yep. I'm like okay <laughs> okay I will see you there yes very excited about that I'm so glad you're going and it's yeah you're part of the now you're you're in it deep good luck you can't get out I'm I in one it deep um well I want to talk about my favorite memory real quick please yes. we have time no please we have all the time in the world well, I ahead. have I have too many favorite memories um and like because I know Charlene touched on a lot of them with like just the panels and really getting to know the guys and it was just like we we're hanging out with the guys all all day and um just their stories and and like when they reunited back in like 2008 right i didn't really understand why and now i know why and it like really puts the whole perspective you know in, in a different way to where like when you're like in your late 30s and early 40s you're kind of like going through like things in life and adult things, divorces or, you know, reevaluating your careers. And, and, and I totally understood that because I, I did the same thing. Yeah. And, you know, I tried different things and then like, you know, towards my end of my thirties, forties, then I decided, no, I'm a writer and this is what I'm doing. And they are, you know, I love how they continue like they, they have other passions too but they have this passion that they always do this for their fans and i love that about them um and the prom so the prom was like crazy too like you guys were talking about the seats so <laughs> i found your friends they were sitting like on one of the steps by like the doors to enter yep. i don't know where and i was yeah, I and I was like, up. I don't know where you were, but like, I was like, I had just took my heels off. I was so tired, and I'm walking up to them. Um, there, I didn't even see them. I was walking past them, like Tracy. So I sat right, right by them, and so then they went away because they went to the bathroom or whatever. And I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna like chill here for a second. It was like 11 o'clock. There was a mass exodus of people all of a sudden. They were just leaving, and I'm like. Did the new kids leave? Like, I don't understand this. And I'm like, maybe Donnie is the only one that's here. And I don't know. So I found like this cordless fan, like on the ground. And I was just fanning myself. And I was just sitting there. I was in a daze. And I'm like, you know, I can go home now. I had my fill. I had like 500 pictures of Jordan dancing on my phone and videos and everything. I was good. So that and all of a sudden I hear Jordan singing Stingy. Oh my gosh. Which again, never in my life thought I would hear him actually sing that live. Are you kidding me? I've never seen him sing his solo stuff. So I'm like sitting there like, wait, I'm like, I was such in a daze that I'm like, are they just playing this song or is he singing it? And I was like fanning myself. And all of a sudden I really hear him singing. I'm like, oh my God. And I literally, like, had my fifth wind. It wasn't my second or third. It was my fifth wind. <laughs> like, I went, my body floated up, and I flew across the dance floor. And I started taking video. And I was like, you literally, like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I think you were still riding, you were still riding high on that wave the next day after the, the Bushball game. You were like, uh, they said Jordan. I heard Jordan. I ran oh, yeah. Jordan. <laughs> I was literally, it was like, it was like any typical prom. I was chasing my crush that doesn't want me. So I was chasing Jordan all over, you know. Um, there was a guy, uh, Donnie, who wanted to party all night. Uh, I saw a few people get really drunk. There was an ambulance and a fire truck outside after, you know. Like, that was a typical prom. But, um, but yeah, so then I stayed on the dance floor. Like, I just stayed. I'm like, this is my sign to stay. Yeah. And it was just like. It was our own like private party and we're having sing-alongs like the sing-along to uh bohemian rhapsody was hilarious i had the whole thing on my phone um well, and i think that's the moment where the next day jody was like 
well, Tracy was here and then she was gone and we don't know where she went. And it was like, oh, <laughs> God, we don't know where anybody was. was. Yeah. Like, I thought they left. And I was just like, well, I'm going to stay here and party. And I had like my shoes in my hand, like the whole time. Promise. And like my phone like that, you know, like just like recording everything. And then um, Joey gets on stage and he wants to go down to, you know, the dance floor and dance with everybody. So Joey was missing for a little bit. And I'm like, where did he go? So I kind of hear cheering on like the right side. I was on the left side of the stage. I put my phone up and I put it on like record just in case, because you never know. All of a sudden, Joey just shows up and he's like making his way, like beeline towards me. And I'm like standing there with my phone and then he comes up to like, he's dancing. And all of a sudden we're all like, ah! and I'm like trying to make sure Joey doesn't fall. And I'm holding my phone and I'm screaming and I'm dancing. I'm like, oh my God, Joey's like right in front of me. And it was like, I like never thought that would happen in a million years there at all. You. What? You got hooked. You got hooked. Like it, you need that one little special new kids moment to be like, well, if I don't go again, I might miss out on the next opportunity to dance with Joy McIntyre or oh, hear. Absolutely. <laughs> no, like, I feel like, you know, I didn't have any like big expectations. Like I felt like getting that selfie with Donnie, with Donnie in the beginning, like that was amazing. And I was like, if you know, and I heard Jordan was like a unicorn. So I'm yeah. like, well, if I do get any other selfies, that'd be great. Like, that'd be fine. I don't really, you know, it's fine. And I was really more about, like, you know, the people that are the true Joey fans, the true Donnie fans. Like, I wanted them to have a chance. Yeah. And that's why I didn't go in the lines. I'm like, no, they're, like, the big fans of theirs. If that was me and Jordan, like, I wouldn't want somebody taking my spot. You know what I mean? So. I'm like, right now, because uh, Meg's uh, just said 12 cruises later. So, example. Oh, God. You, on the you know, you told me about that damn cruise. I don't know if I could hack that. I, I almost died after I'm like finally feeling better after because I had horrible allergies after I was really sick. Um, I know a lot of people complain being sick after the convention. I like I it took me a while to recover. So <laughs> that's again, that's very cruise like when you know, some people called it a cruise on land. And a lot of us know after going on the cruise, we have like a several day layover yep. known as the ECD post cruise depression, where we are sneezing or tired or whatever. It's the Berg flu. There you go. Thanks. That's how I felt. Yeah, that's exactly how I felt. It's it's Sorry. it's Berg flu. Like we have partied and expressed all of our emotions and lived through them crying and us crying. Oh my god, I was like crying at the concert. I was crying at the, during the panels. I was crying like. <laughs> Um, I remember like just standing at prom and it was like, towards the end and Joey was dancing with some of the girls on stage and Jonathan was, he was dancing with a girl on stage and, and I was just standing there and I was just like, what, what am I doing here? Like I'm 42 and like, I would never think in a million years, like, oh, you're going to be partying with new kids on the block at the prom. Like I have friends and like relatives that you know, I've seen the past couple of weeks at parties. They're like, I, I love that you do that stuff. You just go and you do this stuff. And like, people would never think in a million years, like, oh yeah, I can actually go and, and maybe do that one day. So. Yeah. And it's special to have the opportunity to do it. And then also have the opportunity to do it again and do it yeah. again. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's so awesome. Well, I know it was, so awesome to a have met you and b for you to join us tonight thank you, um, thank you for having me. melanie's not here and i hope you get a chance to meet melanie yeah. one of these days um it, it's it's always special when people can share their stories and i think a lot of people are scared of going on these things alone and hopefully your your story and your sharing helps you know what anyone yeah who feels like i can't do that like just do it you, you got a friend the opportunities yeah. because if I didn't see you know I went I almost didn't go like I'm bringing the monkeys in for example because yeah. you know we are we're all getting older and this is just something to think about I almost didn't go to the last concert at the Greek it was just Mickey and Mike and 
three weeks later, I went to that concert. Um, three weeks later, Mike died. So, and it was a shock, but I'm glad I was there with him to the end. And, you know, if you have the opportunity, like I was always told from one of my uncles who's very successful, he always told me, Tracy, you're never going to have the right hair. You're never going to have the right outfit. Yes. It's never going to be the right time. When opportunity presents itself, you have to seize the opportunity. You have to seize the moment before it passes you by. That is my, my advice to end with. <laughs> yeah. it, it's very rare that you would ever, you know, have one of these experiences and go back and think, I wasn't the way I wanted to be. I, my hair wasn't long enough. I didn't have mm -hmm. my eyelashes. Like, whatever it is, those are not the things you're going to remember. What you're going to remember is you did it. You had a blast. You met yeah. all these amazing people. And so I think that's so, so amazing and for I mean, you to share. Even if you're not the most outgoing person, you know, if you are, I mean, because I could be, kind of quiet sometimes I could be kind of like you know oh maybe I'll just do my own thing but but sometimes you know like I met your lovely friends you know they were just like come over sit by us and I'm like okay like sometimes you just run into people that will just welcome you and and that's and then it just starts a whole new thing so I probably wouldn't be going to Iowa honestly if I didn't know like you know what I mean yeah like maybe I would have but <laughs> Honestly, you know, a lot of people I think are scared of these things because they're afraid they don't have the experience or they don't know enough people or um, mm -hmm. people might treat them a certain way. And you hear, you know, stories, anyone in any of the Facebook groups hears the stories of like, oh, people were rude or whatever. That was not my experience. I don't know that that was your experience, but for the most part, the blockhead experiences of light and love and friendship yeah. and just celebrating. I think you just, like Oh, yeah. And just like even like I remember I saw like <clears throat> Donnie's Instagram live, like after the rehearsals, it was funny because I had just I was up and I was kind of like about to go to bed. And then I saw him doing Instagram. I'm like, why is he up? <laughs> and so he's like talking about block high. He's like, I just got done with rehearsals. It's gonna be awesome. And he even said he was like, you know, just don't go in with like any like huge expectations, go in with the expectation to just have fun like i want you just you want you guys to just have fun and like it's gonna be a blast because if you go in with like if i went in with expectations like well i just want to meet jordan i just want to do this i would have had a miserable time like i would have just been so focused on that that i would have missed out on all the other fantastic things that is the best that is the best advice i can ever give anyone for any of these events is just do yeah. not have you can have goals and things. I'd love for this to yeah. happen. When you, you go in and you just say, I'm here to experience. I'm Absolutely. here to be. You're gonna and when there's so many people, I feel like, you know what? Everything's going to happen what's supposed to happen. And like I've met, I've, you know, for example, I've met both of the monkeys. And it happened when it was supposed to happen. I met Mike Nesmith the first month I moved to LA, the end of the month. I met him after one of his shows at a meet and greet. I met Mickey, like, out of the blue at a lounge outside of the San Diego uh, where he was performing. And, like, I was not, I was like, oh, my God, I can't say hi to him. I was, like, so, like, but I'm like, no, I'm going to say hi to him because when else am I going to get to do this? So, yeah. you know, like, it, it happens when it's supposed to happen. Yeah. Honestly. Like, you never know what the universe is going to present to you. Like, I didn't know I was going to dance with Joey McIntyre at the prom in Rosemont, which, by the way, like, many of my proms are in Rosemont as well. Like, and they were also horrible. So, <laughs> okay, Lucas' prom was the best one ever. <laughs> the moral of the story is if your prom was in Rosemont, and it wasn't good, <laughs> we've heard plenty of stories tonight that now, if they have block on two or the next block on you better show up because <laughs> wrong of your old prom that sucks i'm telling you yes like if you had a horrible prom experience if you can do this like and they have another prom like which i'm sure they will go do it because oh. it's going to be the best prom you ever want to even if you don't get to dance with the guys like i did like oh. i got lucky but like, <laughs> i didn't get <laughs> one other than my friends and I had the best time it was honest to god like mm -hmm. it felt like the Lido deck but different like yeah, it was but, amazing yeah yeah
worth it. Oh yeah, it's to totally worth it. And like, yeah, I, and actually, you know, after, <laughs> well, speaking of the panels and everything, like Joey McIntyre, like he's hilarious. And honestly, to God, like, I think he's one of my favorites now, too. So. Oh, he's his energy is hard to <laughs> get his sarcasm. Like, I am very sarcastic. I'm from a sarcastic Irish family, like, I'm sure he is. And like, I just got it. I'm like, he is great. He kept calling us like we're sick bastards. And <laughs> yeah, it was so, oh my gosh. Well, Tracy, I yes. appreciate you so much and sharing your stories. And I can't wait to see you in Iowa. Yes. In, I will, I'll message you um, where our seat, because we have okay. seats. I'm going with Sam, and she um, needs to sit a little bit. So okay. uh, we'll find each other. We will see each other. Yeah. It's be that way. Awesome. Yes, for sure. All right, yeah. girl. Thank you so much. All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks for being here. Bye. Okay, so real quick before I end the live, I'm going to go into some of the questions that were asked here. And Tracy, I can take you out too. So, um, gosh, thank you guys for being here. I'm always, you know, it's such a duo, Melanie and I, and obviously she uh, normally starts the program. So it's always kind of a like, oh, I'm alone and I'm a twin, which I think is part of that. Anyway, that's a whole nother, you're not my therapist. I don't need to go into that with you guys, but um, I want to answer a few of the questions real quick before I close out that came through in the comments and thanks for um, putting those out there. They're all from Carla. Carla, you are amazing. We appreciate it. But one was, um, what would you suggest to someone going to BlackCon next time? Lessons you learned. Um, and again, in the comments, make sure if you're, if you were there, comment along. But I think the biggest thing for BlockCon um, was there are certain hotels that were um, discounted or had, you know, they were kind of the, the hotels to use for the convention and just kind of understanding where those were at a little bit better in comparison to the event. Um, I was at the Hyatt, which was probably the farthest away and by no means was that an issue. It, it was walkable. It was you know, plenty fine, but it was on the other side of like a major, a four lane road. Um, so I, you know, in, in my opinion, I would have stayed on the other side of the road at the, um, Crown Plaza or, you know, one of the hotels that were over there closer, uh, because it would have felt like at night, there was one night <laughs> I'll, I'll shout Melanie out right now. Um, she was at the, oh gosh, what hotel was it? I think it was the Crown Plaza. No, someone, someone correct me if I'm wrong. I am wrong. I know I'm wrong. Um, that Donnie had gone to do selfies um, after the concert. And so she had messaged me. It was like, Ashley, where are you? You need to get over here. And at that point, it was like 1230. And I just could not, I couldn't get out of my pajamas and run across the four lane road and go there. Um, it just felt like too much, even for Donnie. And I love, love you, Donnie, but I just couldn't do it. So um, if I had been, though, on the other side, oh, it was a crime. Crown Plaza was where the selfies were. Hi, Terry. Um, I just, I couldn't do it. So, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like uh, Nights on the Cruise where you hear a friend got on the Lido deck and you're already in bed and you're like, I just, I can't get out of bed. So I couldn't do it. But um, that would be my one thing is maybe staying a little bit closer to the venue. Um, if you could DJ for Black Con and Cruise, what music would you include? I think, you know, honestly, their DJs do really well and they do an amazing job redirecting the DJ if they're not on track for what they want to hear. Um, I, I am always a fan of Bon Jovi. So I get into any of those songs. Um, but uh, I think the DJs always do, they, the new kids do a great job and um, their team do a great job of hiring really good DJs who um, are there to bring the party. So, and obviously Titanium, we got to hear Titanium. It's like absolutely it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there was, there was a lot of people there. There was a lot of people there. Someone said bring food. That's a good suggestion too. I am a celiac person, so I cannot have a lot of fast food or, or uh, food cart stuff. So the day I'm going to share a quick story with you Melanie um, and I can maybe share a little bit more, but if you have not seen it already, go to Melanie or my page here at Gacky Girls. And we had a very special little interview with Donnie at BlockCon. And that day when that happened, people like, like my friend Terry here were out having food at the food trucks. We were inside. There were selfies going on and everything like that. We had our moment to talk to Donnie 
me and have him uh, give some info about what was going on at BlockCon. But um, that meant we didn't have lunch. <laughs> and I can't eat anything. And I didn't bring snacks. So bringing snacks is a good idea. I really like that idea. Um, last question here. Um, since they did so much, what would you suggest for BlockCon 2? That's a good question. Um, you know, I think the hard thing for me is that the panels were so amazing. Like, how do they meet that expectation or recreate that in the future? And um, I don't know, but they surprised us so much with what BlockCon was and how um, exceptional that experience was that I trust that they will do it again. So uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, uh, questions about Jessica Hartney? I don't know. I mean, I'm excited to see him. But I was, that'll be fun. I was really excited when he got um, mentioned to be there. Someone went to the mall to get food. There was a mall right by the venue. If they do block con again and they do it in Rosemont, I think um, it'll be a good opportunity for those of us who were there at this time to maybe do, you know, more social media. I do some, you know, I do YouTube videos with my sisters, um, Gacky Girls on, on YouTube. Um, Melanie and I both do TikTok at Melanie VW on TikTok. Uh, mine is Smashly Bart on TikTok, but we try to do some videos about our experiences and hopefully help people for their next experience um, if they have questions. But any other questions before I get going here? There's so many lovely people here. I'm so glad you guys are all here. and I'm grateful you guys, you know, for those of you who are able to make it every week or those of you who aren't and you, you come back to have a conversation with us um, and be part of the conversation um, last thing I'll end with, here's the end, and then I'm done, is that when Melanie and I, <laughs> Melanie, I can't talk, I'm so, if you can't tell, I'm getting, my allergies are killing me, but, um, when Melanie and I had our first conversation about starting this whole thing, um, it very much was a positive place for us to help. Uh, we loved each other's stories and getting to know each other through social media, and so we wanted to kind of, how do we do that together in a place that feels safe and fun. Um, and that's what we've been trying to do with Blockhead Youth. So we really, really do appreciate it. I hope you all know that um, when you've come up to us or when you've um, shared your stories, uh, we have a lot of people who have submitted stories who we hope to have on in the future. But um, we do, we do honestly really, really appreciate you guys being here. Jean Jacket Girls, hi! I was just talking about your bracelet today. Um, anyway, it's a great, great distraction for us as well. It's a great way for us to um, build our friendship together along with, with you guys. So we love you. We appreciate you. Um, Terry, I love you too. Ah. All right. I'm going to go take uh, some Benadryl <laughs> and go to bed. We love you, Melanie. We can't wait to see you next week. Um, and we're looking forward to our next conversation. So, all right. I'm out. I got to go. Thanks, guys. We really appreciate it. Appreciate you. Bye.